good, how are you? Um, can I get a large iced matcha latte with oat milk, please? Okay, listen, I have some news. If your channel's not growing like you want it to, or your Instagram or your TikTok, or people are not watching your content, it might be because your videos aren't the best. But the good part is you can fix that. You can make your videos better. You can make them better in quality. You can make them to where more people want to watch them. You can have better videos. Let me give you some tips. So I was filming this video and look who I run into. I'm in town. I didn't know he was in town too. Say hi to the can. Oh, it can't see you. I'm gonna get hit. So she's, <laughs> I'm not gonna get hit. Thank you. See, they let me through. Look who I found at the hardware store. Anything on me? Yeah, it is. Yep, Say hi. Oh. hi. Honestly, first things first, you've got to get the uh, panties out of a wad. <laughs> so many people are so stiff on video. And I get it, you've never done it before. I get it, it's weird. But if you're not willing to like be a little bit uncomfortable, like I'm walking by people I know, if you're not willing <laughs> to, you know, be yourself on camera, if you're not willing to like hold the panties down just a little bit, hold the panties down just a little bit, not in like a weird way, then people are gonna feel that. It's gonna feel stiff. It's gonna feel like you don't enjoy creating content. So why would they wanna watch it? Honestly, my best tip for this, by the way, is to just do it. Just get practice, just get on camera. Try not to be someone else. Try to be the same person someone would get if they had a conversation with you and that'll help like loosen everything up. Oh my God, it's so hot. It is so freaking hot. Next, you might wanna upgrade your equipment. Like a camera doesn't make a huge difference, but sometimes a camera makes a huge difference. And if you're feeling like stuck and you're just using your phone or you're using some kind of old camera or whatever, then you might want to upgrade your stuff. Now, I'm not saying you have to have some big expensive camera. Like the one I'm filming on right now is that DJI Osmo Pocket 3, um, which I absolutely love. But sometimes upgrading your camera can really take things to the next level, whatever that looks like for you. Or upgrading your mic or your lighting or something of your equipment that's just gonna take it one step further. Have you ever noticed how some videos just like capture your attention? From the very beginning, they've got you and they know exactly how to keep your attention through the whole video. Video. That is something you can learn and you should learn. And it's basically a video formula and everybody's gonna call it something else or something different, but it really just has three parts. You've got to hook your viewer, you've got to deliver the information you promised them from the thumbnail and the title, and you've got to give them some kind of call to action or something you want them to do next in some way. And in that middle part, in the reason they came to the video, in the part where you're delivering the information or whatever, you have to entertain them. You have to keep their attention. Move your camera around, incorporate B-roll, have some kind of like vlog style that goes along with the video, but keep their attention in some way because if you don't keep their attention, they're gonna dip out. And if they dip out, your videos aren't any good. You do not have to be a pro editor to make this thing work. You don't really have to use any kind of fancy software or do anything like that. But if you can edit your video to help with engagement, you're gonna be so far ahead of so many people. And I'd even go as far to say that you can edit out the awkwardness. You can edit out the things that are just like not interesting. You can edit away the panties in a wad that we talked about in step number one. So I actually had a client back when I was still doing like YouTube management for people. And this client, when they sent their video, it was it was very boring so boring their personality was not shining through they definitely had their panties in a wad and it was just like it was like painful to watch as like someone trying to like manage their youtube channel and i was like nobody's gonna watch this like this is gonna be so hard for people to watch and so we integrated some really eye catching and like ear, noise catching and ear catching and like like flashy editing that we probably wouldn't have normally done on this client's videos because of the purpose of them and the, um, the premise, but we had to do that to actually make their videos like, watchable, actually make them to where people cared and would sit through them. Because if you're just sitting there and you're like talking about your thing and you're just kinda, you know, this is, this is what it is and whatever, 
and you have awkward breaks, nobody's gonna freaking watch that. You've got to like bring more personality and sometimes editing is the way to do that. You need to find your own style. You do not have to film videos, create videos, do videos, just like anybody else in this world. Like you, you need to do your own thing. And if you're trying to copy somebody else's style, if you're trying to be someone else, if you're trying to do something else, it's gonna come across. And people are gonna be like, oh, something about this person or this video feels off. And you have got to create your own thing. So find your style and have fun with it. Because again, we're not all the same and that's great. You know, my style of video is gonna be different from this person's style of video, is gonna be different from this person's. And we all have our own unique like takes and personalities to put in a video. So if you can kind of ignore the parts of you that wanna be like, oh my gosh, well I really just wanna do videos like her or like him or like this person or like whatever, right? And you can tap into your style and come up with your style, it's gonna feel really good and people are gonna wanna watch it. And last but not least, remove the barriers. <laughs> if filming feels hard, it's gonna feel hard. Like it's going to come across like you had a hard time filming it. It's gonna come across like, oh, they're frustrated or like whatever the scenario is and people are gonna pick up on that and not wanna watch it. So remove the barriers from your filming process. Remove it. Like. If you have to get out a camera, a big camera, and lights and microphones every time you have to film, and that feels hard to you, when you do film, it's gonna look hard to the audience. And probably most of the time, you're not actually gonna film because you're gonna be like, oh my God, this is too freaking hard, right? So remove the barriers. Do what feels easy to you. If you're like, oh, every time I film in my house, I have to like move this thing and I have to like, you know, rearrange this whole room and like whatever, because it also doubles as like a playroom or whatever, get outside, <laughs> like get outside. Like I filmed this entire video outside for a reason, for actually multiple reasons, but get outside, do the thing. Like get, it's okay. Especially if that's gonna remove a barrier for you. Or if you're trying to like film with a camera that so-and-so told you to use, but it feels too hard. And every time you use the camera, it feels too hard film with your phone. Get something like this, I'll link it below. Um, that feels easier. It feels like easy. So remove the barriers and everybody's gonna have different barriers. For me, when I first started filming, I was like tense when I would film because I had a toddler at home at the time. So I had this like two and a half, two, two and a half year old at home and I was trying to film while he was asleep. And so I would like go in my office, I would hurry, I would have already done my scripts and done all of this stuff. And I would sit down and I'd be like, okay, I gotta hurry, da da da, and I can't make too much noise because I'm gonna wake the kid up. And everything just felt hard, right? And so that was a big barrier for me to starting my YouTube channel. So I got a sitter for two half days a week. And then eventually he went to daycare and eventually he went to school and all the things, right? And so then it didn't feel as hard. It didn't feel like I had to be quiet and like, I had to like hurry up and do the things. And so everybody's little barriers or like things that stop you from being your full self and being like super comfortable on camera are gonna be different, but try and remove the barriers. Here's the thing, if you don't love it, this is this is this was not on my script, but if you don't love it, if you don't love creating content, if you don't love the art of like expressing yourself on video or filming videos or editing videos and, and all of it feels hard, then it's probably not the job for you. Like it's, it, it's, it's probably never gonna feel easy. And so I know a lot of people who don't love to one, be on camera, but two, they don't particularly like the idea of having to create content as their job. And so don't force it, don't do it, it's okay. There's tons of jobs in the world. You don't have to like being a content creator. And even though you've seen this person or that person, do it and it feels like something you would love and then you get into it and you don't love it, you don't have to do it. But if you do wanna do it and you're someone who's like, my videos are just not great, hopefully these tips help. Sometimes it's strategy, sometimes it's personality, sometimes it's equipment and sometimes it's just making it comfortable. So if you wanna create better videos, there you go. I have to ride through town with my windows down because it reminds me of being a teenager and cruising town. Did anybody else cruise town? This was like a big thing in my town. The year after I graduated, they stopped it because they wanted to like build the town back and stuff. And no, I'm joking. It was, it was a good thing, but 
I do miss it. It does make me nostalgic. So anytime it's a beautiful day and I'm driving through town, we've got the windows down. Oh my gosh, I got back in my car and thought of another tip that I meant to say, but I didn't have on my notes. So this is why we make notes, folks. Um, and that is to get out of your environment. <laughs> um, so sometimes we suck at videos because we get too comfortable. Or sometimes our environment makes us act a certain way on video. So like if you're constantly in your office, then maybe you're always going to be like, you know, a little more stuffy or a little more like whatever, but getting out of your environment could push you a little bit further into the realm of not like that. Or I know for me, when I get out of my office and I go outside like I did in this video or whatever, I tend to be better prepared for the videos as far as like the bullet points and things like that because I have to take that with me. But also I tend to be a bit like less long winded because people are watching me or I'm walking around or um, I'm tired of holding the camera like this or like whatever the scenario is. So I know that my videos are different when I get out of the house or out of my environment, which is my house. So whatever your normal environment is, try and get out of it. If any of you are tempted to comment, take off the sunglasses. I don't want to hear it. I don't hear nothing. Every time I film in my sunglasses, somebody comments, Casey Neistat does this shit all the time. You ain't never seen his eyes. But as soon as I do it, people are like, take off the sunglasses, it's distracting. Don't care, don't care.